chapter, and we need, we need to move forward.
Steve Richardson is our announcer. He's also the head boys basketball coach, and uh, they played all weekend. I, I, I wanted to make sure that we recognize that he gives of his time and service here as our announcer, as does Doug Warren, the parking lot guy, one of the parking lot guys, does all the spotting for him up in the stands. And the Jay Turner Day of Juniors, where are you? Cameraman. Here's the cameraman. Snap those shots. Okay. Does great work. The biggest life poster man. Where is it? Where's the biggest life poster man? I'm sure I mean, it, it is all, all kinds of stuff. Y'all see Jerry shirt. Hey, if you've got Jerry, if you, you have your shirt. Where, where's your shirt? You've got to have your shirt. Okay, running water, getting band-aids, 
getting snaps, getting all that kind of stuff. Game days, getting kids ready, getting the truck ready for Coach Whitney to leave at 2.30 in the afternoon for a 7.30 game because that's when he likes to go and not losing anything. And I, you know, and I go up and they, with my, several of my girls over there and they know that I'm going to ask them, do we have towels? And they said, there's not a cloud in the sky. Do we have towels? Because in every, if we don't have towels, it's just a bad omen and we get rain. But they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know anything about. And they do it without any pay, with a lot. The biggest area that I look at in terms of measurement, ongoing monthly measurement that involves the ED is really core measures. And as we all know, um, core measures are captured, uh, a, lot, a lot of core measures are captured at admission, point of admission. And the ED handles uh, certain numbers of core measures for different, the different disease entities. I think that your group has been very serious about responding to those. Um, you were very methodical, actually, in receiving that information. You had identified one of your own physicians who was really superior at looking at uh, quality review, and he looks at those records every month. He does education for your physician group and your PAs. You have taken ownership of uh, the quality metrics that, that I'm looking at and measuring in my department. Of course, we also always keep our eyes on uh, any patient safety occurrences. And I think that the few of those that happen, and they do typically, you know, they happen every now and then, uh, your team has also been very responsive with. I think everybody realized that um, the staffing situation, the volume was, was an impediment for us, and you had all hands on deck. You put uh, the right people in place to uh, help us lead on campus. We had good docs uh, on board. You were very quick in implementing the uh, rapid treatment area. Also, we found that our pediatric population was much more than anyone had uh, thought it would be. Um, you were instrumental in bringing in some of your leadership to develop the competency of the medical staff, the ED staff, physician staff, and PA staff in managing pediatric patients, and you were involved uh, with us and helped us in planning nursing education as well. So uh, that was a huge accomplishment. The biggest area that I look at in terms of measurement, ongoing monthly measurement that involves the ED is really core measures. And as we all know, um, core measures are captured, uh, a, lot, a lot of core measures are captured at admission, point of admission, and the ED handles uh, certain numbers of core measures for different, the different disease entities. I think that your group has been very serious about responding to those. Um, you were very methodical, actually, in receiving that information. You had identified one of your own physicians who was really superior at looking at uh, quality review, 
and he looks at those records every month. He does education for your physician group and your PAs. You have taken ownership of uh, the quality metrics that, that I'm looking at and measuring in my department. Of course, we also always keep our eyes on uh, any patient safety occurrences, and I think that the few of those that happen, and they do typically, you know, they happen every now and then, uh, your team has also been very responsive with. I think everybody realized that um, the staffing situation, the volume was, was an impediment for us and you had all hands on deck. You put uh, the right people in place to uh, help us lead on campus. We had good docs uh, on board. You were very quick in implementing the uh, rapid treatment area. Also we found that our pediatric population was much more than anyone had uh, thought it would be. Um, you were instrumental in bringing in some of your leadership to develop the competency of the medical staff, the ED staff, physician staff, and PA staff in managing pediatric patients, and you were involved uh, with us and helped us in planning nursing education as well. So uh, that was a huge accomplishment. The biggest area that I look at in terms of measurement, ongoing monthly measurement that involves the ED is... away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. away from 
immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this.
After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. After 18 years,
the biggest area that I look at in terms of measurement, ongoing monthly measurement that involves the ED is really core measures. And as we all know, um, core measures are captured, uh, a, lot, a lot of core measures are captured at admission, point of admission. And the ED handles uh, certain numbers of core measures for different, the different disease entities. I think that your group has been very serious about responding to those. Um, you were very methodical, actually, in receiving that information. You had identified one of your own physicians who was really superior at looking at uh, quality review, and he looks at those records every month. He does education for your physician group and your PAs. You have taken ownership of uh, the quality metrics that, that I'm looking at and measuring in my department. Of course, we also always keep our eyes on uh, any patient safety occurrences, and I think that the few of those that happen, and they do typically, you know, they happen every now and then, uh, your team has also been very responsive with. I think everybody realized that um, the staffing situation, the volume was, was an impediment for us, and you had all hands on deck. You put uh, the right people in place to uh, help us lead on campus. We had good docs uh, on board. You were very quick in implementing the uh, rapid treatment area. Also, we found that our pediatric population was much more than anyone had uh, thought it would be. Um, you were instrumental in bringing in some of your leadership to develop the competency of the medical staff, the ED staff, physician staff, and PA staff in managing pediatric patients, and you were involved uh, with us and helped us in planning nursing education as well. So uh, that was a huge accomplishment. The biggest area that I look at in terms of measurement, ongoing monthly measurement that involves the ED is really core measures. And as we all know, um, core measures are captured, uh, a, lot, a lot of core measures are captured at admission, point of admission, and the ED handles uh, certain numbers of core measures for different, the different disease entities. I think that your group has been very serious about responding to those. Um, you were very methodical, actually, in receiving that information. You had identified one of your own physicians who was really superior at looking at uh, quality review, and he looks at those records every month. He does education for your physician group and your PAs. You have taken ownership of uh, the quality metrics that, that I'm looking at and measuring in my department. Of course, we also always keep our eyes on uh, any patient safety occurrences, and I think that the few of those that happen, and they do typically, you know, they happen every now and then, uh, your team has also been very responsive with. I think everybody realized that um, the staffing situation, the volume was, was an impediment for us, and you had all hands on deck. You put uh, the right people in place to uh, help us lead on campus. We had good docs uh, on board. You were very quick in implementing the uh, rapid treatment area. Also, we found that our pediatric population was much more than anyone had uh, thought it would be. Um, you were instrumental in bringing in some of your leadership to develop the competency of the medical staff, the ED staff, physician staff, and PA staff in managing pediatric patients, and you were involved uh, with us and helped us in planning nursing education as well. So uh, that was a huge accomplishment. We said they were going to be up at 5.30 and they were going to make a 6 o'clock run on the beach. 
before breakfast. And we were going to practice two, maybe three times a day. They were going to get three squares. And they were going to be exhausted. And we found out, even in 95 degree heat, that no matter how hard you practice, they don't exhaust. <laughs> then given the opportunity, okay, and we first gave them the opportunity to kind of cool off in the 95 degree heat by going down and getting in the water. After a whole four hour, four and a half, five hour bus ride, we told them to go get changed and hey, we're going to relax or go down to the beach for a little while. The, their faces were amazing. Some of them had never seen the beach before. Some of them had never seen little crabs and little fish and little things like that. You know, I think one guy went and got, he thought the water was 10 feet deep right at the edge. And get a header into the sand and realized that the water wasn't so deep right there at the edge. And we came back and we had a team meeting. And I saw very quickly that there was work to be done. That a group of young men had to decide that they were going to form some rules and they were going to live by those rules. And that somebody was going to help guide, somebody was going to help lead correct, other than the coaching staff. And I also found out very quickly that for about 30 hours, they could not decide how to drink a cup of water. They couldn't decide. Some wanted it to be drunk on the left side, some on the right, some wanted to hold the glass on the bottom, some wanted to hold it in the middle, some wanted to hold it on the top, some wanted to have their finger in it. You get the picture. Everybody had an opinion about how to drink a cup of water. And I made that painlessly clear to them throughout the course of time this year. It's like, there you go again. Y'all cannot decide how to drink a cup of water. We had what our version of Midnight Madness is one night. And midnight turned into 3 a.m. with us sitting around the confines of the hotel, just the seniors and me. And it was the pass the shirt to talk meeting. And it was after about 30 hours of being down there that we started getting work. And people started getting the towel. And when they got the towel on, it was their turn to talk. They said stuff that everybody listened to. And you couldn't talk unless you had the towel. And that towel went around that bunch of seniors for three and a half hours. And some conclusions were drawn. And the conclusions were we said that we were going to be a special group. Nobody said we could do anything. And basically, we're just going to prove them wrong. The second night, that happened. The third night, we were in the cafeteria. And again, there was a little bit, this was a, with a bigger group, but there was a little bit of commotion about some things that were going on. There was a possibility of a, you know, a trust bond and not being able to trust my, my neighbor and this guy took this or this guy took that. And, you know, one guy decided that he had had his credit card stolen and we found out it was in Soberton, Georgia, where we stopped to get, you know, drinks and stuff like that. When he pulled his wallet out, it fell right out on the floor. But for about six hours, there was a thief on this property and they had taken that credit card. And there were some other things. There were some things that, that I won't mention names, but there were things that, oh, this is gone. It's gone out of my room. This, it was taken right out of it. Let's go to your room. Where did you put it? Oh, I put it right over there. And that's exactly where it was, right over there. But you got to understand something. When you take kids, and they're in a room by themselves with three other kids, 
Gamer, don't get in a room, get your kids' room. Multiply that times four for three days. They had on each other's socks, okay? Underwear they wouldn't claim, okay? You know, they had the shirts, I mean, you name it. I mean, every three days it was clean up time. It's like, whose clothes are these? We don't know. People were in our room. What happened? The result of that, though, was amazing. And before I go any further, I want to bring Coach Whitley up here. He's going to, to tell a short story here and give you some insight on what's coming. Okay? Coach Whitley. continue that tradition. 
Then when traditions begin, they need to continue. And the camp was unbelievable. It was great that, you know, Jerry and, uh, and uh, was Robert. And Robert went down there, I tried to talk to people. They can tell you, uh, something, something else I feel next year, so I'll be past the baton if you want to. But uh, it's, it's a really good, good time for us when there were kids to bond together as a staff and uh, with the family for some great results again next year. So I'm telling you now, 210 days. Save your money. Don't ask your mom to get a check on July 23rd. It ain't going to happen. I want you to put some money back and, and earn your way to share this year, okay? Any questions? He's also 
known as the chief. So those of you that know the chief, when you see him, and he'll be out there on that baseball field sometime tomorrow or sometime around here, he's always doing something for our kids and always doing something for part of you. Make sure you say, hey, Chief, we wanted to thank you for uh, helping out with those end zones and everything for the playoff game because he loves doing it. He puts time towards it, especially on the baseball field and everything else. And so thank you guys. Thank all the kids that helped. Thank all the parents that helped. And thank Chief and everybody else for uh, all the support this year. Have a good night. Uh, my wife has one brief announcement for something that's coming up, and we need to get uh, you out, get the information out to you all, and it'll be coming in a different form as well. This is a save the date for our third annual Miss Parkview Junior pageant. Um, Milton has been coaching since wife, and myself will be tackling this again for the third time. Um, last year we had right at 80 girls participate, grades K through 8. And the date this year will be on Saturday, March 9th. So we will need a lot of helpers. Um, we've had a lot of parents in the past that volunteered. If you did something in the past that you loved, whether or not it was set up, or being in the dressing room, I've already got the volunteer sign-up sheet ready. You can see me afterwards. But basically, we will have rehearsals on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of that week. And then we'll be here all day long on Saturday the 9th. Um, Millicent used to do the pageants up at North Gwinnett, still helps up there. Um, we've had coaches' wives help. Kelly Hill's going to be helping this year. Ginger Whitley has helped with the past. She's going to be helping this year. Um, Christy, I mean, all of us work together along with the Mothers Club, so join in. It's a lot of fun. Something new we're going to try this year is to get some goodie bags out to the girls as a gift. So if any of you have a business where you have little tangible items, donate or work in a business where you want to donate some kind of gift card or gift certificate, that can be very helpful as going toward the cause instead of having to just open up your pocketbook. We also have a program that you would like to buy advertising in that as well. So we'll be getting information on the website by the end of this week so that you can get in touch with Penny or I about anything you would like to help with. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Coach Shutter, I'm going to proceed to the JV Awards. I'd like to take the time to recognize our uh, managers. They did an excellent job this year. Like Coach uh, said earlier, these are the uh, unsigned heroes that set up the field, set up the water, and uh, keep our guys from uh, overheating down the field. Uh, I'm going to start off with our JV girls first. Uh, ladies, when I call your name, uh, walk up to the front. Christina Alma. Christina Alma. Alyssa Johnson. Pamela Pillory. Zoe Randall. Abby Sanchez. Cheyenne Sinclair. And Gabby Waters. These are our JD managers. Going out to our varsity managers, Alonjo Lerio.
Start off, Cameron Doolittle. David Draper. Draper going up. Cameron Bidding. Michael Whitley. Tracy Whaley. Dakota 
They work. And I, along with the staff and everybody else, saw them get better and better and better. It was said that, oh, look, the ninth grade team, we, the ninth grade team was, there wasn't a ninth grade team. There was a JV team made up of ninth and tenth graders. My vision was for them to have won every single game. My focus was to make sure those kids worked to get better at the essentials of playing the game of football. There's where I measure success. I watch people who could not get in stances get in stances. I watch people that wouldn't come off the ball hard come off the ball and start hitting people. I watch them go against in the latter parts of the year, I watch them go against some of the varsity players in scout team and punch the ball ahead. I watched a team that got beat at the wire several times win a game in the very end, and I saw how proud they were that they won the game. More than that, though, what I told them was that you need to be proud that you stuck it out because it'll pay dividends, you freshmen. It will pay dividends. The road to success is not always easy. You can't get anything for nothing in a parent's eye, in a person as a spectator's eye. They say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And I'll tell you one quick story about my own son, and I'll show you how this measures up. Patrick attends Georgia Southern University, and when he left about this time last year, going to Georgia Southern, I had prepared him for this. I had prepared him that you're going to go in there and you're going to be a freshman, and you're probably going to get redshirted, yet you're going to do every 6 a.m. workout, you're going to do every three-hour practice, you're going to attend every football meeting, Every team meeting, every film session, every coach's note session, and go to and go to class, and you're going to be expecting to make all A's, and you're not going to play a bound, and you're going to have to endure that for one calendar year, because there are people in the spot that you're playing that have gone and they have walked that very road that I just described. Long story short, the head coach called me the week of the first game and one of the linebackers that was playing where Patrick played had gotten himself in a little jam and the coach had suspended him. I fully expected Patrick to be richer. Coach Munkin called me on Monday, though, and we said he's starting on Friday, on Saturday. And I went, Coach Munkin, he's a freshman. Just like many of our freshman parents said, he's a freshman. And Coach, he has prepared himself. He has worked in the weight room. He has worked in the film room. He understands the game, and he's going on the field. That's been my motto here all along, the 20 years I've been head coach here. It matters not, folks, it matters not that a kid is a freshman or a sophomore. If he's good enough and he makes the grade, he earns the opportunity to go out on that field. Patrick wound up having a great year. He had five starts. The irony of it is, is when Kyle got back, Patrick went back and he assumed his role and said, well, I'll be the backup. And he was the backup. And a lot of people scream, that's not fair, that's not fair. That's football. I told Patrick, remember, Kyle has been there and done what you were, what you were prepared to do. Kyle did that. Kyle redshirted. Kyle didn't get to play a down. You freshman. 
open. Okay? A lot of y'all didn't get to play it now. So it's like your red shirt here. Understand that. It's like your red shirt here. You did all the drills. You did all the work. You didn't play any game. It's not like any other institution that plays football in America. You go off to college, you get red shirt. And you work. But your work's not in vain, freshman. Your work is not in vain. It will pay dividends, and I need you to understand that. So my hat's off to you. Give those freshmen a round of applause. They did the deal. They stuck it out. They did that what they were asking to do. And they will reap the reward for doing it. I promise you, they'll reap the reward. Okay. One of the things that we do is we have worked out some kind of club winners. Thousand pound club winners are those people in the weight room that have did their endeavors of working in three lifts. They combine the numbers and they make a thousand pounds. Well, here we go. Ronnie Baby, come up here. Picked up a bumble. 
and there was a guy that's like, Ronnie, run. Hey, I'm running. I'm running, coach. I ain't running this much in about four weeks, five weeks now. But he picked up a fumble in the game and helped secure our win. So it was a great time uh, for that. And if you miss that game, it comes out every year right before Christmas. We, we played at the Peachtree Ridge on a Friday night. It was awesome. Uh, you missed a great game. Our team won, so that made it better. Uh, now, well, let's, let's move on to something a little more serious. We can, we always talk about all the, the accolades, the sports accolades that go on in, in, in the course of a year and all the things the kids did and all the awards they won for football. But, you know, this building was not created necessarily for sports. This building was created as an higher institution of learning. And this is a national school of excellence where high learning goes on in the hallways, okay, in the classrooms every day. And if we award people that have 90 averages that are on the varsity team only, if you have a 90 or higher average with no rounding, you get a scholar athletic package. If you're a repeat holder of that, you get a pin to signify that you're in a club. Yes, this is a sophomore and above award, by the way. Even if a freshman play on the varsity team, a freshman doesn't have enough grades in, this, in the system to qualify, so you have to be a sophomore or above. So here we go. Kurt Hickman, you're first. Jack Marie. 
Houston, first year veteran. Tyler Stevenson, returning veteran. John Patterson, returning veteran. Kyle Williams, returning veteran. Brandon Sullivan, first year veteran.
again when our bar, you need to come back by because they did not give you a football to go on your letter. You need to get a football. Okay? Y'all can have a seat. We'll move forward.
been a lot of long afternoons and a lot of long Friday nights. They did a phenomenal job. You guys know that uh, because of their hard work, you're able to send films, we're able to send films out to colleges and things of that nature. Of course, coaching staff looks at film, uh, their film extensively to uh, evaluate and make changes and do everything that's necessary to be successful. And they did a phenomenal job and never complained. And I just want to mention some of the crew now, Rafael Montero, Kayla Dixon, Quincy Mindy, and also want to thank Max Jones, who's alumni, who has filmed for us for four years in the past. Came back this fall to help orient the new crew. And I just want to say, again, what a tremendous job they did, and actually give them a hand, uh, round of applause this time. Thank you.
Jay Turner. Hunter Thornton. Lamonte Frazier.
Okay, because they were the driving force behind the football teams. Y'all give them a great round of applause.
ça After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. After 18 years, Stone Mountain Toyota is moving to a new location. We don't plan to take any of these vehicles with us, but I do plan to take the coffee maker so you can still come in and have a cup of coffee with me and feel right at home at our new location. This moving sale is huge. Come in and make me an offer on any new, pre-owned, or certified vehicle. The best selection will go fast at these prices. Stone Mountain Toyota, South Gwinnett's Toyota Superstore. that to eat healthy we should shop at local farmers markets. But that gets expensive. Well, Kroger has a lot of healthy foods and great prices. Really? Yeah. Like this Yoplait light yogurt. It's fat free. Only well, has 110 calories. Hmm. Healthy foods and great prices at Kroger. Yeah. Almost as good as having a teenager who picks up after himself. Gotta go. Yeah, right. <laughs> Find Yoplait light on sale this week at Kroger. More value for the way you live. Stream, camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com/sbp.